Hey everybody, it's Tom, and coming to you this evening to begin a series of videos on a fine text, a text which I think is especially appropriate, especially neat for the, the junction at which we find ourselves here in uh, the year 2020, uh, the tool, the, the, the text in question, Tools for Conviviality, Tools for Conviviality by one Ivan Illich. You may have heard of Ivan Illich, um, though he's not in vogue in the manner in which he was once upon a time. He's uh, a celebrated thinker, perhaps most famously for the work he wrote antecedent to tools for conviviality, uh, de-schooling uh, society, in which he provides a critique of systematic compulsory education as a deeply problematic project, a project which is at odds with genuine learning. So he sets up uh, a tension there. And in, in almost an, antipath, an, an antagonism between these terms of education and these terms of learning. It's concerned with, in that work, my understanding very broadly, the tendency to install mechanisms of conditioning, social control, mechanisms of conditioning and social control having a certain seductive potency because they can create the impression that certain problems can be contained, controlled, even eliminated. But in the course of attempting to contain, to control, to eliminate these problems, oftentimes we set up a milieu in which they ultimately become and intensified. So to sort of build on this notion of education and university compulsory education or schooling, and honestly, this this is a, an issue in which you know uh, Illich has really provoked me because at first blush, I, I even I would be sort of uh, sympathetic, at least, to this idea that everyone should go to school. But what uh, his analysis brings to bear is that schooling, through the uh, imposition of curricula, has come to undermine genuine learning. It, it actually fosters a kind of cultural dependency on an institution for uh, a dangerous mimesis, as it were, where people become addicted to the correlation of education with things like testing and certification, licensure, they become attached to the notion that what constitutes attainment is effectively compliance and cooperation with the bureaucracy. And this, pretty transparently, is... Uh, almost anti-learning because dependency is in diametrical opposition with the assertion and activity of your own intelligence to reach out and find within yourself and with others a fertile relationship with the world at large. So to just go over that point once again, here we have this notion that you can contain the stigma of ignorance, if you like, if you have something like university compulsory education. 
But the character of universally, universal compulsory education is to create dependency on an institutional, a bureaucratic framework, which ultimately discourages the exercise of independent intelligence. This is true not just of schooling, but other institutions as well, virtually every institution. So the other institution which Ivan Illich brings a task very centrally for our moment is the institution of contemporary modern uh, medicine, modern industrial medicine, even if you want to append to that term, industrial, right? In fact, the just sequel to the introduction of Tools for Conviviality, he opens in the first chapter, rehearsing the developments, and this is, again, this is amazingly prescient work from 1973, and on its heels he would write two other texts, uh, Medical Nemesis, and another one, Limits of Medicine, where he engages this question of how modern medicine has become a true threat to genuine health, uh, fundamentally iatrogenic, not just with respect to medical conditions, diseases that, that, that can ravage people that originate with uh, treatment, right? Not just in terms of physical iatrogenic phenomena, but socially and culturally, contemporary medicine can be... Uh, incredibly dangerous in terms of the relationship which it can engender with uh, own bodies, with each other, where there, there's almost a kind of terror at uh, realizing the, 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 the gift of our, own, of our own corporality, of our own biology even. And he uses an example which was sort of illuminating to me uh, of, of childbirth. And we have just sort of uh, become conditioned very generally to just assume that uh, you need to go to the hospital to have a child. And, you know, that's not in itself intrinsically problematic, but it blinds us to the fact that, no, you don't need to go to the hospital to have a child in the vast majority of circumstances. We are equipped with our own bodies, or women, you know, have, you know, the, the gift in their own body to, to undertake that process on their own. Obviously, you, you know, we can help each other in that process altogether, but we don't have to rely on insertion into a potentially in dangerous environment, which is a hospital. Okay. I know these, the, you know, and, and that's just one, one example, you know. And, of course, you don't want to, pardon the, 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 the expression, throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Don't misunderstand me as, as trying to dis dismiss medicine to court altogether. But we, we've, uh, particular, where, we, where, where we find ourselves is at a, a junction of a kind of hypertrophic relationship with institutional medicine that itself is fundamentally diseased. The manner in which Illich couches it is in terms of what he refers to as two watersheds. In uh, 1913, he uh, said you could point that as the first sort of positive watershed in the development of institutional medicine because that's when more than 50% of the population had access to so-called professional medical care. But then, over the course of the ensuing decades, especially toward the 50s, you have a situation where there's a second watershed which is attained, where the positive developments that are ushered in by modern medicine, such as cleaner water, certain hygienic practices, etc., are eclipsed by the uh, onset of this transmogrification where institutional medicine becomes fundamentally pathological. And, and, and what creates this circumstance is that medicine itself, through the 
sort of development of professionalization begins to determine what actually constitutes illness and then will impose that determination upon people at large. So it is no, so it's taken out of our hands to determine whether or not we are sick or healthy, both as individuals and as a society. And then it is placed into this kind of uh, new priest class, professional medical practitioners, to make that uh, determination for us. And it's incredibly, dramatically disempowering. Right? You know? So, uh, this, th these are the sort of signals. The character of modern education, the character of modern medicine, with which Ivan Illich, then to draw the circle, opens tools for conviviality. Now, what does he mean by conviviality? What does he mean by tools? Right? Well, to take the latter first and then the former to close it, uh, by conviviality. That I just mixed those two up. <laughs> tools for conviviality. What does he mean by conviviality? Well, what he means by conviviality is a particular orientation towards each other relationally that grows in part from our understanding of limit. The problems of education, the problems of medicine, the problems of industry are problems of excess. And these excesses are in terms tied to a kind of idolization of and we could call it, he uses the word tools, you could use the word technology. In many ways there's echoes of Jacques Ellul, if you are familiar with his work and his critiques of the technological society in Illich's analysis. There's also echoes, uh, and, and in the work itself references to Herbert or Marcuse's One Dimensional Man, right? So this idolization of technology is really a look beyond ourselves. It's something extrinsic to our being, both as individuals and as society, that um, relates to a kind of... Well, what happens, I would say, is that, that, that we obscure the degree to which we're actually alienated from our world by pretending that the tools can help us solve all the problems in the world. But this obscuration leads to an intensification of that alienation. And the consequence then of that unspoken intensification is a sort of psychocultural stress that then erupts into deeply problematic developments. The, you know, we then start turning to things that are fascist and proto-fascistic or just even just raw violence because we, we are not engaging the actual terms of our life and our experience. And we lose the ability to, to, to interface with each other in, in, a meaningful, in a meaningful way. Happily, we don't actually completely lose that. But there, there's a distancing... A social distancing, if you like, from how we are, as human beings, fated to, to love and embrace each other. There's a, there's a forgetfulness. Conviviality is the anti antithesis to these trajectories. And, and, and it, is, it is realized by exercising a sense of limit, a sense of finitude with regard to tools, technology, or anything that we want to put outside of ourselves and above ourselves. Now, I should clarify that I am not, by that statement, uh, trying to dismiss the notion of transcendence. Uh, paradoxically, I would say, what, when, you, when you look outside of yourself in the sense 
that technology and tools invite us to look outside of ourselves, you actually lose touch with authentic transcendence. It can, uh, in its most sort of uh, luxurious uh, appearances, uh, idea of this, this, this problem of idolization can become a sort of spiritual materialism. All right. So the conviviality he's talking about is the conviviality of genuine human relationship, which then itself is predicated upon a certain relationship with our world or with each other that demands examining how we have framed those things which we use to interface with the world. Tools, technology, and so on, right? And certainly institutional education, institutional medicine are two of those tools. We need to reevaluate our relationship with them and other things as well, right? So th these are the sort of uh, opening salvos of this text, Tools for Conviviality. And I think they certainly invite our scrutiny, our examination. Um, and so this is just, you know, to overview his introductory remarks. And... The next video, I'm going to go over what is actually the second chapter of the book, uh, Convivial Reconstruction, where he sort of puts sort of more meat on the bones of this notion of conviviality. And I shall perhaps just say to do uh, the same. So, so, so much then for like the first video. And just, you know, I mean, even if you didn't read this work, he's got plenty of essays. Ivan Illich, check him out. You know, Tools for Conviviality. He's kind of a radical's radical. And what I like about him, is that he will draw from people all over the place, not just people on the left or the right, right? He's, he's a man unbounded by ideology, and that to me is always a barometer of, of, of wisdom that at least merits an ear. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening, and I will talk to you next time.